Our next speaker is Summer Burnett. Thank you guys so much. All right, so tonight I'd like to start off by sharing uh, a passage uh, from a memoir called Preemie. It's a Lessons in Love, Life, and Motherhood by Casey Matthews uh, that I heard and was quite powerful. She writes, just eight hours after my emergency C-section, at 3 a.m., my nurse came to take me to see my son for the first time. I didn't want to leave my room. I didn't think I could handle seeing him hooked up to monitors and machines, but my mother encouraged me to go. She told me how important it was for my baby to hear my voice and feel my presence. I was wheeled down a long hall. We passed the newborn nursery that was full of chubby, sweet, screaming babies. I just couldn't look. I had to choke back tears because I knew that that was no longer our reality. Our reality was behind a locked door in a secluded part of the hospital that many people never see. The nurse showed me how to scrub in and I was taken to Jackson's bedside. There lying naked underneath a piece of plastic wrap was my baby, born four months too soon. He wore a tiny hat that covered most of his head. His eyes were still fused shut. A, ta a tube was taped to his mouth I could barely see his sweet face. His skin was translucent and I could see every vein in his body. He had IVs in both hands and an arterial line in his belly button. With each breath, his chest, his chest heaved up and down. And the doctor shared with me and my husband the tremendous challenges that our baby faced. I was overcome with emotion. I felt sick and faint and desperately wanted to return to my room. Unfortunately, I wish that I could say that Casey's story is rare, but unfortunately, as we know, over 380,000 families, this will be their reality. And these numbers are ever growing, and this is very, very alarming. My job as a child life specialist in the neonatal intensive care unit at Florida Hospital for Children places me at the bedside of families as they experience the spectrum of emotions that Dr. Bernstein so lovely talked about that are very real that these families experience. And these emotions often come from the birth of a premature baby and happen to almost all of us. So feelings of guilt from a mom who just wants to go home to a safe place but doesn't want to leave her baby. Feelings of anger from a new brother or sister who just wants to play and run around but is told repeatedly to sit down and be quiet. A grandparent's sadness wishing that they could take the pain away from the grandbaby but they can't. A husband's feelings of hopelessness because his wife is depressed and he's tried everything to help make it better but he just can't seem to help her. A mother's feeling of loneliness as the phone calls and check-ins begin to diminish each week and she's in the hospital alone. Her fear of how she'll pay the bills now that her maternity leave is up and her baby is still looking at two more months in the hospital. The anticipation of a father being told that he is able to hold his baby for the first time since his baby was born three weeks ago. The feeling of contentment when a baby is having a great day and the best friend calls to check in and they have their favorite nurse caring for their baby today. The feeling of relief when a family learns there is someone in the hospital that will help them prepare their other children who are getting ready to see their baby brother or sister for the first time. The feeling of hope when a parent hears that their daughter's heart was fixed with medicine, meaning no surgery. The restoration of faith as a parent feels closer to God than they had ever felt or experienced before. And a husband's feeling of love as he watches his wife advocate for his son's care. These are real life descriptions of emotions felt by parents and families in the NICU where we have the pleasure of working. Mothers and fathers, grandparents, aunts and uncles and siblings all feel these effects. They're not just the moms and dads. There's really no right experience that these families face. It's just their experience. And we have to be there to meet them where they're at. The need is so great. And this is why we have organizations like the Gift of Life 
to help ease the burdens that these families face. Organizations focused on assisting these families provide so much more than they're even aware of. Support is felt financially, emotionally, and physically. Whether it be a welcome box filled with information to educate, inspire, and connect, a knitted hat or a bear to celebrate a holiday or a milestone, or maybe even a discharge box full of items to help families as they experience their new life together at their home. Watching a NICU baby develop into a feisty, independent being is one of life's greatest, greatest journeys. And whether families are in a place of sorrow or complete joy, it is an honor to watch these miracles defy odds each and every day. To NICU families old and new, I leave you with this twist on perspective. If you were ever unable to witness your child coming into the world, know that you were able to witness and given the gift of watching them grow from fragile, premature babies to flourishing 36-week-olds. You have observed the strength in your child that you would have never seen had your journey started in that NICU with those chubby, screaming babies. Thank you. <laughs>